Welcome to the NC Choices webinar series, Teaching Tools for Beginning Farmers, funded by the United States Department of Agriculture Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development Program. I am Johnny Rogers, coordinator of the Amazing Grazing Program, and I am going to present the module on grazing sheep in solar farms. If you are interested in other resources offered by NC Choices, you can find out more on our website or on our YouTube channel. As I said, we'll talk about grazing sheep in solar farms this morning, and uh, it probably begs the question is, why are there so many uh, solar farms in North Carolina? And there's a couple reasons for that. One, in August 20th of 2007, North Carolina became the 25th state uh, to, and the first in the Southeast to enact a mandatory renewable energy efficiency portfolio standard into law. So basically what this says is that a high percentage or about 12.5% of the electricity sold by utilities in North Carolina need to be generated by renewable sources by 2021. There's also been some tax incentives to help stimulate the solar industry in our state. So this graph just shows that North Carolina is the second largest or in some cases the third largest state in the nation uh, led by California and North Carolina is certainly uh, behind them but you can see that solar farms uh, is becoming a very large part of the North Carolina landscape. This uh, indicates that North Carolina would be the number three state as far as uh, megawatts generated by solar capacity and it's enough to power nearly a quarter of a million homes across our state. So it is very significant as we look at electric generation in North Carolina. And you, this is just an example of one of the solar fields that you might see uh, dotting the landscape as you drive around North Carolina. And one of the things that has become an issue is how do you, we maintain the vegetation or manage the vegetation that lies within these solar farms? We have several options. One is mowing by mechanical means with either a tractor and some type of rotary uh, cutting device or maybe uh, a zero turn lawnmower. Uh, chemical mowing with herbicides that actually suppress grass growth have been used in some cases. Uh, some solar sites will have an impervious layer, uh, but you even with an impervious layer with gravel and filter cloth, you still have the challenge of grass will begin to establish and you may have to use some type of chemical to suppress those, uh, those plants. The other thing that we'll talk about today is grazing uh, these sites with, with sheep. Sheep are a, a, a really good animal to use in these sites, and we'll talk about that here in just a little bit. So why are sheep good uh, grazers in solar farms? Well, initially you would think about maybe cattle or goats that, that could be used, but in the case of cattle, cattle are simply too large. Uh, they would like to rub and scratch on the panels, and, and just because of their sheer size, they could, they could inflict some damage on the equipment. Goats uh, would be another option, but goats uh, inherently like to climb and they also like to chew uh, on, on things like exposed wiring. Uh, so that could obviously again lead to damage and, and something we don't want to have happen in our, uh, in our solar farms. Mowing is quite expensive and when you also think about mowing, we're obviously burning uh, uh, fossil fuels and uh, you know the whole idea of solar farms are greener, cleaner energy. So anything we could do to make, uh, uh, to reduce the, the use of those uh, fuels would, uh, would certainly be beneficial and it would make the whole system more sustainable. So grazing has a lot of options. Grazing the forage using a rotational or an adaptive management uh, a solution just offers tremendous advantages. It utilizes the, the grazing resource that's, that's, in the, uh, that's in the solar farm and converts that into animal protein. It improves forage stands because grasses uh, need to be grazed uh, in order to stay viable and healthy. Uh, proper grazing management will actually build soil health which will improve water infiltration and retention into the soil and have uh, many benefits from a water quality standpoint. It also offers local farmers an opportunity to build or expand on their grazing system. So if you're a farmer that's near uh, a solar field, you may choose to expand your sheep operation by, by grazing this or adding uh, the, the vegetative maintenance as a an additional enterprise to your sheep farm 
um, or maybe you're not a sheep farmer today, but you've always wanted to farm and this can offer you an opportunity to get the land access that you need to, uh, to start your, your enterprise. So if you're a solar company, or if you own a solar farm, uh, what are the benefits to grazing sheep to you? Well, one is obviously vegetative control is your number one priority because shading and plants actually touching the underside of the panels can reduce the efficiency of electricity generation by the solar panels. So we need to keep the plants away from the solar panels as much as possible. Um, also, we, we need to maintain the perimeter fence. Most of these sites have a chain link, uh, a secure perimeter fence around the perimeter, so that obviously needs to be maintained, and that's something that the sheep can graze very close up to those with minimal chemical intervention or minimal uh, weed eating. It is a sustainable maintenance practice because, again, we're managing this area as a pasture, as a farm. Uh, we have enhanced site security because farmers are actually on site each day or multiple times per week, and this actually can add to the security of folks who may uh, want to enter the solar farm. Farmers can often serve as a local first responder because a lot of the solar companies have sites across the state of North Carolina, so having that farmer there as a, as a first responder can be a valuable part of, the, uh, of this enterprise. It's also a very positive story because, again, it's a blending of agriculture and electricity generation on the same land. So it's kind of the same uh, shared use of land. It is a very positive story uh, when, when agriculture can work uh, with this new uh, industry. If you're a sheep farmer, what are the benefits and why would you want to consider grazing a solar farm? Uh, first and foremost, it's a very uh, secure fence pasture in most cases. Like I say, most cases the, you'll have a chain link fence uh, securing the perimeter of the solar farm and that can kind of obviously keep the sheep in the solar farm, but more importantly it can actually help to keep predators out of the solar farm which can protect your sheep. Can be free grass, but you know obviously nothing's really free, so you will obviously have some challenges that we have to overcome as we, we face this, and in some cases it's actually more than free grass. Some sheep farmers are actually being paid to manage the vegetation in these solar farms, so again that adds value to their enterprise. Shelter and shade. Many times in open pastures during the summer, uh, livestock operations can struggle to find shade uh, for their livestock uh, from, from the, the summer heat and the, the sun. So obviously a solar farm actually has mostly shade underneath the panels, which can actually be beneficial to the livestock. And again, I've already made the point of being paid to graze for a grazing service would be a great benefit to, uh, to, to a sheep uh, farmer in this system. So I alluded to before some of the challenges that we can see when grazing solar farms. And first off, I wanted to just, you know, throw this out is sometimes it's hard to find out who to contact. And probably the best thing to do is, is most solar farms will actually have some type of signage out front that will have some contact information, addresses, phone numbers, and, and a lot of times websites or emails. So you can go, uh, that's a good place to start and contact the solar company directly and see if they would be interested in, uh, in grazing sheep in that facility. Now you're probably going to come up with some roadblocks first and foremost because they're going to have some concerns about grazing sheep in solar farms and I received quite a few calls uh, throughout the year uh, from both producers and solar companies about how do we overcome some of these challenges. Uh, solar companies are obviously afraid that sheep are going to damage their panels and uh, to this point we have not had any damage uh, reported uh, for sheep damaging the solar panels so that's good news. Risk associated with farmer injury, and again, there may be some insurance requirements that, that farmers will have to have, uh, higher insurance requirements that farmers would have to have uh, than their traditional farming liability policy. Some of the far, uh, solar farm workers that are in and out of the farms on a periodic basis may have to work around some temporary fencing. Uh, we encourage the use of temporary fencing inside the solar farm to actually set up a rotational grazing system inside the farm. Uh, that way we can manage the grass in the most effective manner and, uh, and increase the, the vigor of the forage stand over time. 
uh, sheep escapes from solar farms. Uh, you know, w solar farm workers need to be uh, schooled a little bit and educated on the importance of keeping the perimeter gates closed so that way we don't have any sheeps wandering outside of the solar farms. Sometimes livestock guardian animals can be a challenge, particularly livestock guardian dogs. They can be very protective of their flocks. So again, as we have solar company employees moving in and out of the farms, that's something we have to be aware of and may have to address. Obviously, these solar farms were set up to generate electricity, not set up initially as grazing systems, so water availability can, can, can become quite a, a challenge. On some of the larger sites throughout North Carolina, uh, they've actually dug wells to have a permanent water installations, but in most cases, uh, shepherds and sheep farmers are actually hauling water, and this can be very effective because the water requirements for sheep are not very high, uh, but again, if you have to haul it some distance, it can become just another cost and another uh, time-consuming activity that is necessary to, uh, as we look at grazing solar farms. This is just an example of a water system set up that's actually pressurized water in a permanent system and you can also use some above ground pipe and quick connect cut couplers to deliver water to sheep uh, grazing in solar farms. Another challenge that I've encountered as I graze my sheep in solar farms is finding and counting the sheep. If you have a, a pasture that's 25 acres, let's say, it would be very easy to go out and find your sheep that were out in that 25 acre pasture. Now imagine that you build a solar farm on that 25 acre pasture. It becomes much more dif difficult to find, count, sort, and gather and herd your animals because they can run up underneath the panels. So it becomes a little more challenging. Certainly a lot of producers have addressed this by using feed to toll their sheep and to gather them in a, a temporary catching, a catchment pen, or some actually use herding dogs. Uh, that can be very effective and move more swiftly underneath the panels to, uh, to help gather the sheep. Handling facilities or loading facilities, obviously, obviously you'll bring the sheep into the solar farm and it's pretty easy to unload them, but once you want to load them back up, most producers are using some type of temporary panels and those can be purchased and will last a long time. They're very durable and easy to set up and easy to take down and move to the next farm. So that's pretty easy to overcome. Again, this is just another picture of, of sheep uh, grazing around one of the temporary uh, enclosures or temporary pens that you would have to uh, manage the sheep while they're in the farm. Another very frequent question is, I've got a 25 acre solar farm, how many sheep can I run within this 25 acres? And unfortunately, there's not a lot of data out there from a, a scientific standpoint and uh, about what the proper stocking rates might be. We do know that it's gonna be less than what we would typically find in a pasture near that solar farm that has the same soil type, same rainfall, and same management. So we can look at realistic yield estimates to kind of give us some uh, guidance. You know, when we look at forage stand and, and, and how many animals we might want to run there. But it's probably safe to say that at least a third to a half of that production uh, level that could be expected will actually be reduced by a third to a half. Uh, and this is because of equipment traffic that can compact the soil, which will limit grass growth. Plus, you have the shading effect of the panels which uh, will obviously um, uh, decrease forage production. Uh, currently, we would recommend starting with about two mature ewes per acre and use good grazing management and adjust uh, based on conditions. Also, we have to think about, is this gonna be a seasonal or a year-round grazing enterprise on this solar farm? So in other words, are you only gonna have animals on this farm during the green growing season of the year or are you gonna try to maintain that flock there year-round? The solar farms that I've seen throughout North Carolina are very highly variable in terms of grazing conditions because of prior vegetative management. Uh, a lot of the solar farms are actually being constructed out on pasture and obviously that can lead to a very vibrant stand of forage because it's already established. Many solar farms are actually being built on sites that were obviously forested land and uh, obviously the site prep, soil amendments, a lot of things can kind of uh, uh, go into uh, come into play as far as what type of forage production we might find 
uh, in that type of situation. So it really goes from one extreme to the other. You can have some sites that can be very productive. You can have some sites that will be very limited in their production initially, but as we manage those pastures with good grazing management, good pasture management, good fertility, we can obviously build those into high quality grazing systems. Another challenge is establishing grass in solar farms and, and sometimes the farmers may have limited input because the farmer coming in to graze these solar sites are actually coming in after the solar farms have been built. So we need to think a little bit about, as, as we're farmers, we need to think a little bit about and offer suggestions where we can and uh, try to avoid some of the um, uh, turf type or contractor blends of grasses that you might see out there because they may not offer good long-term productivity and persistence from a grazing standpoint. And we also need to be aware that some solar companies like to use herbicides that can actually retard the grass growth and limit grass growth. And this can actually impact our grazing, uh, obviously quantity of forage that we would have for grazing. And it may alter the botanical composition because some of those are actually broadleaf herbicides. We all know sheep like to graze broadleaf uh, weeds, uh, plant species. So that can obviously have a, a pretty big impact. Also, in, in most cases with adaptive grazing management, we're going to, to uh, be a big proponent of using temporary fence. And with, in solar farms, using temporary fence can be somewhat limited in terms of options that we have, but it can be done. So uh, here's an example of a solar farm in 2015 that we subdivided and it's, those yellow lines will kind of show you where the temporary fences were located and the uh, circles on each uh, three locations actually show you where the water source is located. So we could rotate the sheep uh, through this system and it's very easy to construct fence when they run the same direction uh, parallel to the panels. Now. In 2016, on this particular farm, this is the same farm, so you can see we, we kept the, the same lines that run parallel with the uh, rows of panels, but we also uh, subdivided even further with a, a, a uh, actually a temporary fence down the middle of the solar farm, and that worked out pretty well. Uh, we used a, a UTV to put out the temporary fence. We also use a solar energizer. It's kind of ironic sometimes that there's not electricity available in the solar farms. So you're probably going to have to use a battery powered energizer for your temporary fence or maybe some type of, of solar uh, energizer. And the, the placement of the temporary fence actually in this case, it was actually wider between some of the uh, arrays of panels. So that's where we, uh, it was just easier to walk through there. And that kind of gave us some nice equal subdivisions. And using temporary fence, some fiberglass posts as well as step-in posts, we found to be very effective at controlling sheep inside of these solar farms. Another challenge that we run into is, is predators. You know, predators are a huge problem uh, with any type of, of sheep operation or goats, and using guard animals can be very effective. So, and this will vary between uh, different types of solar farms. You can see that in this case on the picture on the right, uh, there's actually uh, quite a bit of distance there and very easy path uh, coming across that ditch where uh, predators could enter and sheep could obviously exit that. So that would need to be addressed. Another common thing that we see is a lot of time farmers are asked to mow. Uh, between the panels uh, during grazing events and that can be uh, uh, quite stressful because it is hard to maneuver uh, with traditional agricultural equipment inside a solar farm. So that might lead to uh, another challenge which might mean capital investments in new equipment. Here you would see a zero turn lawnmower, a very heavy industrial type that can be used to mow a solar farm very effective but those can obviously add expenses to the, to the farming enterprise. Also, there have been very limited incidences where sheep have actually injured themselves, mainly back injuries as they're going underneath the solar panels. Those have been some kind of minor cuts and abrasions that have been treated and the sheep have actually recovered and, and done quite, quite well. Some other additional training might be necessary for farmers that are, asked to, that are looking into grazing solar farms. You might need to complete an OSHA training so you can use good practices and, and maintain safety inside the solar farms. There may be, as I mentioned before, 
uh, insurance requirements that would be much higher than what you would typically have on a, on a farming operation. And of course, there'll be contracts between the farmer and the, um, and the uh, solar company. So again, you would need to kind of just make sure you have someone help you go through that process. And that's obviously something that uh, North Carolina Cooperative Extension can certainly help you with, as well as the Center for Environmental Farming Systems. So in summary, uh, sheep production in solar farms can be a very viable enterprise. We're really excited about this opportunity. We do think that it's key to have good communication uh, between the solar company and the farmer. Grazing sheep in solar farm, it's a win-win situation. It maintains the vegetation, it generates electricity, and it uh, can produce animal protein or food uh, for, for people. Uh, research is needed to determine the optimal stocking rates. You know, the stocking rates that we can have to both control the vegetation that we have there, but also maintain a high level of performance and health for our sheep. And potentially economic models could assist in controlling traveling costs and the distance that need to be uh, that, uh, between each solar farm and the other costs associated with this, uh, with this enterprise. Thank you for your attention.